Jerome Powell signaled that the Fed may cut rates as soon as September and that rate cuts have been a big part of their discussions. This means the markets may rally significantly come September into Q4 and we may see the blow off top for crypto by the end of this year. And Ethereum is getting massive adoption with a massive London backed insurance company ready to accept payments with ETH and tokens that are built on ETH. And Tether is reporting over $5 billion in profit so far for this year, which is incredible. This is why everyone is entering the stablecoin market. We're going to break this down and much more. Let's get into it. Hey, everybody, welcome into the Thinking Crypto podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. I'm your host, Tony Edward. On your way in, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. Folks, the big news of the day is we heard from the Fed and Jerome Powell spoke after an FOMC meeting saying they had a lot of discussions about rate cuts and that an interest rate cut could come as soon as September. So this is a very bullish signal. Everyone has been waiting to see what will be the signal. When, when will Jerome Powell raise up the white flag, right, that they're going to start cutting rates? And it doesn't have to happen today. The markets are forward looking. So the markets are saying, oh, they are now entering the cut phase. And it, it doesn't mean they're going to cut 10 times by September but it starts the ball rolling. So they may do one cut come September, another by the end of the year, and then into 2025 and so on and so forth. So what does this mean? It means cheaper capital, folks. We live in a debt-based uh, economy and, and they use fiat and debt and so forth to drive the economy. So it will bring back a lot more borrowing and lending and loans. And this is good for the business cycle. It's good for uh, retail and people buying homes and selling homes and all that. I don't think I need to explain the econ economics for Fully on that, guys, it means cheaper capital and cheaper capital for investors. It gets the economy going so people put more capital into assets. So I hope you understand why this is significant. However, as I've shared with you guys many times, um, when the Fed does pivot, historically, we've seen the market tank significantly. So what does that mean? It means that the blow off top could happen by the end of this year. So be prepared. I could be wrong. I'm just stating based on history, based on what we're seeing, uh, we could see Bitcoin and the altcoins do their massive push with the fifth wave, so to speak, with the Elliott wave uh, model, and then the blow off top, and then that's it, right? We enter into a bear market. Or uh, maybe it's this time around, it's different. And here is an example. Janet Yellen at the U.S. Treasury has been very busy. I tweeted out about it today. Um, it's being reported that the U.S. Treasury increases liquidity buyback total to $30 billion from $15 billion. They are injecting more liquidity. And I tweeted that, you know, Janet Yellen's been doing QE 2.0, a bit of stealth QE over the past year. And I've been sharing with you guys that the global uh, liquidity M2 money supply has been on the rise. All these governments are injecting liquidity. They're not coming out and saying it's QE, but this is a very different version of it. When they are injecting liquidity into the market, that means they're taking the cash. They have to print the money and put it into the market, right? So uh, please understand how this drives asset prices up because we've seen the correlation. The higher the global liquidity goes up, the more uh, asset prices rise. The more they debase the currency, the more asset prices rise. And this is true for stocks, real estate, and crypto. As I've been telling you guys, we are in a macro bull market for crypto stocks, real estate, and so forth. So I'm bullish, but I'm also watching this very closely because I know some sort of correction. History has showed us when they actually start cutting, there's some sort of uh, correction that comes later on. And once again, it's not instantaneous. It can be a lagging effect where it happens by December, right? The crash happens by December or January. I, I don't know, but the data is, is telling me that's the story we've seen historically. So I think the signal has been put up here. So I'm telling you, be prepared, have your plan, know what your cash out plan is, and we'll watch this closely. Uh, as there are some are saying, you know, this thing is going to go all the way to the end of 2025. I'm not sure about that. And we'll have to wait and see. Look, facts can change. This time could be different, but I have to go with history and the data uh, around this for now. Now, of course, the week of any type of FOMC Fed meeting, there's a lot of volatility. So Bitcoin's not doing anything. It's actually pulling back. Even the DXY is crashing. So go figure, right? 
but we have to give it a week, guys. I, I've said it many times. The week of, you can't judge anything because the markets are just so volatile. Um, we've seen that historically. That's another data point, and that's a lesson I've learned that just ignore the, the charts this week because it, it's too volatile. Um, so guys, I'm prepared for huge gains come uh, for the remainder of this year. And I have my plan for taking profits, both in the stock market as well as crypto. So I hope you also have your plan written out and you walk away from this market with profits. Let's move ahead. We got big news here that Lloyd's of London-backed insurance policies can now be paid in crypto on Ethereum. This is huge adoption news. Let me give the details. Lloyd's of London, the three-century-old insurance marketplace, is backing digital asset protection policies arranged on the Ethereum uh, blockchain that can be paid for natively on-chain using cryptocurrency courtesy of Lloyd's cover holder Evertaz and smart contract insurance provider Nams. It wasn't long ago that any kind of cryptocurrency insurance cover was hard to come by, aside from the efficiency benefits of paying for policies in crypto and using a blockchain to streamline intermediary heavy paperwork, a Lloyds of London consortium of syndicates backing crypto native on-chain insurance shows how far the industry has progressed in the last couple of years. What we're enabling is for people using public blockchain infrastructure to interact with highly regulated traditional fiat-backed institutions in a way that is seamless, said Evertoss CEO Jay. Jadansky in an interview. Whether it's to pay in USDC or native crypto or to place policies completely on chain with the blockchain helping to coordinate between a broker, the insured, and the insurers, we think this is a seminal piece of infrastructure. He's spot on, folks. We are seeing massive infrastructure being built to accommodate crypto on ramps and the adoption of the blockchain with tokenization and putting many different things on the blockchain. Just yesterday, we talked about uh, the California DMV putting uh, vehicle titles on the Avalanche blockchain, right? So if you hold the AVAX token, the native token of that blockchain, that's very beneficial to you, right? It means more adoption, network effects, Metcalf's law, and the value of the network will increase. And of course, it's native token. So this is all bullish news, guys. So uh, let me give you some more details here. Names, a digital marketplace where brokers and underwriters connect with crypto capital investment is a play on Lloyd's names, the collection of individuals and corporations who underwrite the risk at the historic insurance market. Evertas provides cover to custodians, exchanges, and the Bitcoin mining industry. Last year, Evertas acquired mining cover specialist BitSure and began offering policy limits of up to $200 million per crypto mining location. Folks, I'm so bullish on this technology and asset class, and not just for this cycle, as I've been saying time and time again, I'm looking towards the future bull market cycles. I will be buying the bear market bottom with some of my profits uh, come 2027 and so forth and preparing for the 2028 Bitcoin halving. Now, Jeremy Allaire of Circle, which issues USDC, said this is a big milestone for USDC on-chain insurance products underwritten by Lloyds of London. So obviously, USDC was mentioned as a, uh, a, a form of payment that could be used. So very bullish news. And once again, this is not a crypto company doing this. Uh, this is a traditional company with centuries old that is adopting crypto. Very bullish news. All right, quick word from our sponsor, and that is BitGo. BitGo is one of the top tier crypto custodians in the market. They're headed up by Mike Belshi, who I just recently interviewed. Mike is one of the Web 1.0, 2.0 legends. And uh, BitGo is working with many big brands such as Bitstamp Exchange, Bitcoin, IRA, Pantera Capital, and much more. Uh, Nike uses BitGo's wallet service for their NFTs. And some of the services that BitGo offers are hot wallets, custodial wallets, self-managed cold wallets, and NFT wallets. So if you'd like to learn more, please visit the link in the description or go to bitgo.com. All right, folks, Tether generates a record $5.2 billion in profit in the first half of the year. That's a whole lot of money, folks. And that's why you have so many people entering the stablecoin market now, right? PayPal, uh, VanEck, they just launched AUSD. Ripple is going to launch a stablecoin. There's a lot of money to be made here. And certainly stablecoin is one of the killer apps of blockchain and crypto where money is a digital instant settlement. It's global 24-7. And uh, look, people want U.S. dollars. And if you put it in a digital format where it's much easier and you have instant settlement, 
that's going to be a big winner, right? Because the US dollar is the world's reserve currency. So leading stablecoin firm Tether released its latest quarterly attestation showing a record net profit of $5.2 billion for the first half of the year. Uh, Tether issues the largest stablecoin USDT, which has a market capitalization of nearly $115 billion. That is huge, folks. Massive. Um, now let's talk about some news around custody because Kraken Pro today uh, tweeted out, institutions, are you ready to access qualified crypto custodian solution through a US regulated state chartered bank? And they highlighted that Kraken custody is a now available to US, UK and AU institutional clients. And the significant part of this, despite the SAB one-to-one -one debacle with the SEC, is that Wyoming, uh, their base in Wyoming, has given them the clarity. So Caitlin Long, who's based in Wyoming and the founder and CEO of Custodia Bank, says Bitcoin custody is moving to banks in the U.S. because of asset segregation and bankruptcy remoteness. Wyoming anticipated this, so it set up a special SPDI bank charter. Custodia Bank and Kraken Bank are crypto native banks operating today that offer these superior legal protections. So... I love this. And uh, I think this is needed for the industry, the proper infrastructure for custody and so forth, uh, firms that are regulated and being monitored so that we don't have any type of FTX nonsense again in Celsius and so forth. We need to put that behind us. All right, let's move ahead. A16Z Crypto leads $9 million Series A round for DPEN Project Daylight. So A16Z, I love to pay attention to what they're doing because they are the biggest investment fund in the crypto industry, guys. And uh, not only are they investing in crypto, they invest in different forms of tech and other parts of uh, the economy. And uh, they have a ton of capital. They have the branding, they have the name, they have the notoriety. And Mark Andreessen, of course, knows tech. He was in Web 1.0 building Netscape and so forth. Uh, so Daylight has raised $9 million in a Series A funding led by A16Z Crypto. The D-PIN project is building a distributed energy protocol on the base blockchain. So that's Coinbase's Layer 2 uh, for Ethereum. Co-founder and CEO Jason Badu told The Block. So what the hell is Daylight? So let me give you a quick rundown. Daylight was founded in 2022 by Badu, uh, Yudit Patel, and Evan Karen all of whom have backgrounds in the energy industry. Here's a quote. It was clear to us in 2022 that electricity demand was set to explode from compute growth, electrification, and reshoring of industrial capacity, and that the historical model of grid expansion would be the constraint to serving this demand, Badu told the block. Building transmission infrastructure is nearly impossible, so we need to find new ways to optimize energy growth, and distributed energy is critical to that. Daylight is building a decentralized protocol that lets users connect their energy devices such as thermostats, batteries, electric vehicles, and solar inverters to its app and earn rewards. That's pretty cool, guys. The blockchain and tokens are allowing people to be able to monetize these different things and uh, earn. So pretty significant. I'm going to look into more into this project. Anything that A16Z is investing in, I'm paying attention to, especially if there's a token, because... There's a lot of liquidity that's going to go behind it. This is pretty big. Um, check this out. Nansen CEO launches meme coin that hits $6 million market cap within a day. So look, I'm not big on meme coins, but it's it's there for you to invest. But no, it's the riskiest on the risk curve for all assets uh, in the crypto industry. So Alex Svensvik, uh, CEO of on-chain analytics platform Nansen, launched a new meme coin called IQ. He used a platform called Make No Meme to create the token, and it grew to a $5 million market capitalization within the day of launch, according to crypto data platform Dex Screener. The token is priced at well, way below penny uh, USD, and oh, it's on Solana. So <laughs> be careful out there, folks. Look, if you know what you're doing, go for it, uh, but be careful. You know, it, you, it's very risky. You could lose all your money, you can get rugged. So just be careful out there. But Meme coin fever is still 
It's still crazy, man. It's it's wild what's happening. All right. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter on Substack. It's filled with crypto insights and knowledge. Also, grab a copy of my book, Rethinking Crypto. It's available on Amazon in paperback and digital. Grab a copy for yourself. Grab a couple copies for your friends and family who want to learn about crypto. It covers crypto's past, present, and future. It provides investment tips and much more. And if you bought a copy already, guys, please, please, please leave a rating and review. It will help me out in the rankings. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. And I'll talk to you all later.